Uh, I want to share just uh, a simple message this morning called, What's Cooking? What's Cooking? Uh, how many looking forward to Thanksgiving this week? How many looking forward to partaking of some good eats, right? Um, anybody have some favorite dishes, some favorite Thanksgiving dishes? Just raise a hand, raise a hand. What do you got? What do you got? Sweet potatoes. Yes, yes. So someone said amen to that. Any others? Stuffing. Stuffing. Come on. Yes. Mac and cheese. I'm not calling on you. I'm concerned about what you're going to say. Uh, what do you got? What do you got? What's that? Banana pudding. Banana pudding. Share it with your mom. She'll vet it. She'll vet it. What do you have? Smoked turkey. Smoked turkey. Oh, my goodness. He says, okay, what's that? Turkey. turkey. There you go. That's a great answer. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Yes. Yes. Um, lots of good stuff, right? Lots of good stuff. I remember one of the first Thanksgivings, well, it was the first Thanksgiving I went to with Camille's family in Sacramento, California, all her, all her extended family, aunts and uncles and grandparents, and I believe we were just engaged at that time. Yeah, we were engaged at that time. This would be 2006, I believe, we were engaged. And so, you know, you want to you know, you make a good first impression, right? The family's heard about you, and, and uh, you know, you got to, like, try to learn everyone's names. That only took, like, seven years to learn everybody's names, uh, seeing them a couple times a year. And, and then on top of it, they all know I'm a pastor, so it's like, okay, I really got to make a good impression here. I'm, I'm, I'm representing her. I'm representing Jesus. I'm representing Pat. Oh, my goodness, this is a lot of pressure. So you want to come, and you want to do well, right? And, and so I go in there, and I'm, I'm trying to psych myself up to get comfortable. It was kind of potluck style. Everyone brought a dish, and they laid it out buffet style. And so I'm like, okay, this is good. I'm from Vegas. I understand buffets. I know how to work buffets. I'm already feeling good, feeling good, feeling overconfident, which is, which is a red flag uh, for guys. And so I, I get my plate, and I start going down the line. And one of the first, the first dish they have there is cranberry sauce, which I love cranberry sauce. Love cranberry sauce. Put it on everything. But I thought it was odd that it was first. I'm like, oh, wow, they put it out first. That's, that's different. Uh, but let, let's, let's put the cranberry sauce on ahead of time. And so then I filled the rest of my plate up, and I kind of moved the cranberry sauce over the turkey, over the mashed potatoes, over the stuffing, over whatever I could put cranberry sauce on. Just, just put a little bit of cranberry sauce and everything. And then as I worked my way down the line, right at the end was, was cram, cram, cranberry sauce. I thought that's kind of odd. Two, there's cranberry sauce at the end, at the beginning and the end, alpha and omega cranberry sauce here, okay. And so then I took all that, and then I, I sat down, and, you know, just talking to people and, and trying to look like a normal person, you know, and all that stuff, and, and, and trying to be friendly. And I took my first bite, and I realized that I had put grape jello all over all my Thanksgiving entrees there. The grape jello looked just like the cranberry sauce. I never had grape jello on uh, Thanksgiving food <laughs> stuff before. I never had that. I don't recommend it. I don't recommend it. I don't rec you, don't need to, you don't need to experiment to find out for yourself. It's, it, sounds, it tastes like what it sounds like. And uh, so I'll never do that again unless I, I make another accident. But I'll never do that intentionally. And, uh, but, you know, it's my first time with these people. And so, you know, normally I would just get up and move that stuff up, but, but this is my, so I just acted like it was normal, and I, I ate it like a man, and consumed <laughs> my Thanksgiving meal with, with grape jello all over it. There had to be one or two people going, why, this guy really likes jello, wow. Um, but hopefully no one knew what was going on the whole time. Hopefully I had a good poker, good Vegas poker face going on. Um, no, what's cooking, right? What's cooking? Um, share this verse here out of Colossians 2, verse 7. Uh, welcome to all those joining us online. I already got a text from someone. It says, yeah, I watched you. I couldn't make it this morning. I was watching you online. Always thankful for those joining us online. Had another person, another lady tell me a while back. She said, I was, I was out of town. I was at an airport in Denver, but I was watching you live. I was staying connected. So love the engagement that we're seeing with our online audience. Thank you for staying with us. All the notes are in the ICLV app. But it says this in Colossians 2, 7, let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. Let's read that out loud together. You will overflow with thankfulness. You'll overflow with thankfulness. Paul is saying here that as Christians, if we're properly rooted in Christ. Rooted means to be fixed. It means to be established. It means to be immovable. 
That if we're, if we're rooted properly in Christ, that part of the fruit of our faith is that we will be overflowing with thankfulness, overflowing with gratitude. That this should be a mark of a Christian, to be overflowing. How many of you ever remember hearing about the, the splash zone at SeaWorld? Ever experienced that before, right? The splash zone, you, you sit so close to, the, uh, to Shamu that when Shamu does the tricks, you get splashed, right? It spills over, right? That's, we should have, as, as believers, we should have a Holy Ghost splash zone when we're around people. That if people get around us, whether they're believers or not, they get splashed with thankfulness, with gratitude, with praise unto God, with, with, with gratefulness for those around us. People should get splashed with some good stuff, right? And so even if you're not cooking the meal... If you're not cooking the meal this Thanksgiving, you're cooking any food, preparing any food, how many of you, you help prepare the food? How many, we got some cooks in here. All right. How many, you don't cook anything? I'm waving my hands right now. I make a mean bowl of cereal, mean bowl of cereal. Even if you're not cooking, you're still serving something up this Thanksgiving. You're still presenting something for others to partake of. You can serve up thanksgiving and gratitude to others. You can serve up thanksgiving and gratitude to others. Yes, good job. I'm thankful for you guys. Good job. (laughs) You know, our faith in Christ says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23, Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. And so we've all sinned, and when sin pays us off, it's a cruel taskmaster. It's eternal death in the lake of fire. Romans 5.8, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And if we confess with our mouth Jesus is Lord, Romans 10, 9, if we confess with our mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. There's a lot to be grateful for as believers. Man, even if everything in the natural seems to be going against me, man, if I got Jesus, if my name is written in the Lamb's book of life, if he took me out of the miry pit and raised me up to eternal life, man, I have a reason to be thankful. This this idea of thanksgiving is, is rooted in biblical concepts way before the pilgrims and the Native Americans of, uh, of the American holiday. Way before that, you go back to Leviticus, and there was the peace offering of thanksgiving. I actually taught on this a year ago, the peace offering of thanksgiving. That was a free will offering. See, there was offerings in the Mosaic law, in the Levitical law. There was offerings that you had to do. They were required. You were obligated to offer the the whole burnt sin offering for your sin. You are obligated and required to do many, many things, and it's good. We need that. We need God to give us clear direction. We need God to give us commands. I need God to give me commands because sometimes I'm a knucklehead. You know, well, I don't know what to do. God, just do this. Okay, thank you. I'll do that. We need that. But the peace offering of Thanksgiving was not a required offering. You could give as many peace offerings of Thanksgiving, as, many, as little or as many as you wanted, Right? which is how Thanksgiving is. It should be something not forced, not something compelled. It should be something organic. It should be something beautiful that rises up in us that makes us overflowing with Thanksgiving. Then you have Psalms of Thanksgiving. Just for one example, Psalm 100 verse 4 says, enter his gates with Thanksgiving and his courts with praise, right? You ever get locked out of your car or your house? You can't get in. You got to find the keys, right? Right? Well, the Bible says very clearly that if you want to get into his presence, you enter with thanksgiving. Some people, some Christians, they're, they're locked out of the presence of God because they've lost the key of thanksgiving. You enter his gates with thanksgiving, not complaining. And so you can serve up thanksgiving and gratitude toward to others. You can't encourage somebody else if you're discouraged yourself. 
But there's other things we can, we can serve up. Look at Hebrews 12, 14 and 15 here in the New King James Version. It says this, Pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up or sprouting up causes trouble, and by this many become defiled. I was thinking of this. I don't know if any of you guys uh, have seen the, the old sitcom Seinfeld. I don't know if we get any Seinfeld fans here. But uh, one of the characters in there, his name was George, and it was kind of understood that he, he came from a Jewish family. And so growing up, his family obviously didn't celebrate Christmas, but his dad invented a holiday. It was called Festivus. A Festivus for the rest of us. And so he invented this holiday, and, and, and then he invented traditions. One of the traditions he had was the annual airing of grievances, where they would go around. Everyone had a chance to air out their grievances for the year. And we go, man, that is ridiculous. That is humorous. That is funny. That is a fictional sitcom. And yet many people are celebrating Festivus every year at their holiday table. They don't even, they don't even realize it. Oh, Festivus, that's, how are you getting this into a sermon? Because there's many Festivuses going on across America this week. There's many annual airing of grievances. The Bible says to be careful that any root of bitterness develops in you. Now, Colossians 2.7 says that we're to be rooted in him. Now, watch this. See if you can follow this. That the word rooted in Colossians 2.7, the Greek there, the root word of rooted is the same Greek word for root in Hebrews 12.15. I don't know if you can follow all that. Watch it on the playback. It'll all make sense, I promise. It's the same Greek word there, association, between being rooted in Christ and a root of bitterness. So I can, be, I can have a root where I'm fixed and I'm established in the grace of God, or I can be fixed and firmly established in bitterness, in bitterness, in resentment, in disappointment, in hurt. There's all different types of bitterness that... Uh, we can experience. I remember a time in my life I was much younger. I was a youth pastor, and I had a lot on my plate, and I was feeling overwhelmed, and I even uh, had this phrase that I was describing myself with. I, I felt burnt out, which is, is kind of funny for me to say now because when I look at what I was overwhelmed with in my 20s, I would much rather take that than what I have today. I, I'm like, wow, that would be easy to deal with now today. But, you know, it's all relative. At the time, I felt overwhelmed. And I remember complaining to God. I was very cynical. I even had, I talked to one of my friends, and, and he was listening to me, and he, he, he called me years later and said, man, I'm glad you're doing better because I talked to you a few years ago. You didn't sound so good. <laughs> I was very cynical. And I remember talking to God saying, God, I feel so used. I just feel used. And I was angry and frustrated at the ministry that I had going on at the time, I was angry and frustrated with those around me and, and things I felt like people were doing to me. And, and Lord, I just feel used. I feel like a tissue that was just blown on and thrown on the ground. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about here. And I'm sitting there having this great, uh, exciting pity party with Jesus in prayer. And the Holy Spirit whispers to me. He says, didn't you ask me to use you? Hey, that's not fair, Jesus. You're using my own words against me. That was a different type of use. If you go back to the Greek and the Hebrew, it's a totally different type of use. I've been hurt. I've been mistreated. I'm disappointed. This is a different type of use. No, no, let me take you back there. The worship music was playing. You were up at the altar at ICLV circa 2000, and you were going, yes, God, I just want to be used by you. Lord, whatever you want to do, I surrender, Jesus. I just want to be. Are you following with me? Use. Anyone ever prayed that prayer before? I still pray that prayer today, but it means a lot. It's a different prayer now for me today. I pray that with the fear of God today. But I was bitter, I was cynical, and I was defiling others with my attitude and my mood, right? Side note, not part of the main sermon today. We should be used by God in a way that only Jesus fully knows. Yeah. 
There should be things we do that we don't get credit for. There should be things we do that nobody knows about. There should be things we do for God that's just between us and Jesus. And it doesn't matter how people respond. It doesn't matter if there's a great harvest, big harvest, small harvest, medium harvest. The point is that we say yes, like Pastor Robert Fanita said yes 35 plus years ago. The point is that we say yes to God out of a heart of gratitude for what he's done in our life and and the opportunity just to serve him and be co-laborers in Christ. But I digress. I digress. That's not part of the message. Here's the thing. A bitter root produces sour fruit. A bitter root produces sour fruit. And the Bible says you can defile others. That as a root of bitterness, it springs up. I mean, it just sprouts up. We're not talking about a giant weed that you can come up and grab with two hands, just pull out of the ground. We're talking about something just sprouting up right here off the ground. The writer of Hebrews says, don't let a root of bitterness sprout up out of the ground by which many will become unclean spiritually. Many will become defiled by your little sprout. And the sad part is many people have way more than a sprout. They got a whole stock, right? I say that, you know, with much empathy, right? Because people go through hard stuff. And so the Bible says that we can defile many. And so we have to protect the menu that we're offering to people here in this season. We got to protect what's on our menu to other people. And in closing, I just want to share a couple points real quick about protecting what's on our menu to others. First thing is this. You want to take ownership of your heart. Take ownership of your heart. If you go back there to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15, and you look at the verse there, it says, looking carefully, looking carefully lest, lest any root of bitterness spring up. Looking carefully, uh, you could also say looking diligently. In the Greek there, it's the same word for oversight. Have oversight over your heart lest any root of bitterness springs up. In the Greek, it's the same word from 1 Timothy 3.1 that Paul uses for bishops. He talks about requirements for a bishop. A bishop was an overseer of a plurality of churches. They had spiritual oversight for multiple churches, multiple congregations. They were leaders of leaders of leaders. And, and so it's the same word in 1 Timothy 3, 1, that's in Hebrews 12, 15, which says to look carefully and look diligently at your heart, lest there be any root of bitterness sprouting up. It's the same word basically saying this, don't blame other people. You are the bishop of your own heart. There's no one else over your heart. It's time to adult. It's time to do, you know, hashtag adulting, Right? Right? I'm not responsible for your feelings. You're an adult. You're responsible for your feelings. Of course, I'm accountable to God for my actions. I'm not saying it's a license to do whatever. I'm just saying you're responsible for your feelings. You're the bishop of your own heart. God has given you authority to oversee your own heart. You have the ability in the power of Christ to manage junk that might be sprouting up in your heart. You can get rid of it. You can cast it out. You can resist it. You can receive healing. God can cleanse the wound so he can close the wound. You are the bishop of your own heart. And so the first step is, you you got to you got to take responsibility for what's going on in there to protect the menu of what you're serving up the second thing is this decline the offer to pick up someone else's offense decline the offer to pick up someone else's offense so we know that a root of, a root of bitterness in us can defile other people we know that but you also have to be aware that someone else's bitterness can defile you. And no one's going to come up to you at Thanksgiving this year, no one's going to come up to you and say, hey, I have some offense and bitterness to offer you that I want to give you right now. No one's going to come up and make that proposal to you. But they will start a conversation with you. They may even text you. They may call you. They may 
They may model negative behavior towards another person in front of you. And the enemy wants you to pick up their offense and make you spiritually unclean. So that over time, a root of bitterness begins to sprout up in you as well. Don't pick up someone else's offense. I remember it was one of the first holidays we had with three boys. Judah, our, little, our youngest Judah must have been a year or two. And it was Christmas and, you know, ministry can be a busy schedule. And so we really cherish the days that we have together as a family, uh, as husband, as wife, uh, as father with his children and, and all that. And, and I got a text message um, from a loved one. I got a text message and, and, and they were just off. I think they, they might have been um, drinking too much alcohol for the day at that point in time. And they started to say things to me and wrote me into things. And I was trying to like, no, I don't know what you're talking about. And I, we had a couple of, I'm like, no, I, I don't know what you're talking about. I went back and, and finally I just kind of walked away from it. But I had been at it for, I don't know, I don't know, 15, 20, 30 minutes. I can't remember. I remember Camille going, are you okay? You seem different. Your mood seems different. I said, no, I'm not okay. I'm not okay. This is what just happened. And it affected my mood for the day. It hijacked my happy holiday. Ever been there before, right? Yep. And so I just, I just made a decision like I am, I'm going to have boundaries where I don't pick up someone else's offense that they're trying to offer to me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to make this an important day. I'm going to make this an important time. I'm not going to ignore people. I'm not going to be insensitive to people. I'm not going to, uh, you know, call people out. Or, but I am going to ask God for wisdom to have healthy boundaries so that I am not defiled by someone else's root of bitterness. Amen. Worship team, you guys can come forward. Thanks for your assistance. So, We need to be the bishop of our hearts. We need to take ownership of what's in our heart. We need to decline the offer to pick up someone else's offense. And then number three, we need to build gratitude into our lives. Build gratitude into your life. We live in an age of negativity. We live in an age of criticism, an age of scrutiny, an age of polarization. We live where everybody's got an opinion and they want everybody to know it. And if you disagree with them, it, it almost gets them fired up to share their opinion more. People just want to, they want an opportunity to double down on their opinion, right? That's the age we live in. I'm telling you, you cannot obey Colossians 2.7, which is, which is something we're called to. We're called to overflow with thankfulness. You cannot fulfill Colossians 2.7 if you're not intentional about building gratitude into your life. You got to take some intentional steps. You got to assess where you're at. Tend to your own heart and fill it with thankfulness and gratitude to God, for God, to others, and for others. Otherwise, in this area of your life, you're just a, a, you're like a dead fish just floating downstream. You'll just be as negative as the environment around you. And it's never been more negative in my lifetime. It's never been more negative. But I don't want to just float downstream. I want to be built on him, like Colossians 2.7 says. Rooted in him, built on him, overflowing with thankfulness in him. So maybe you got to make a list. Maybe you got to start the day off with some declarations of gratitude. Maybe you got to put some worship and praise on before you start scrolling on social media. Maybe you got to spend some time in your Bible, in your Word, whatever. You got to build some gratitude into your life because there's just one question I want to ask you here this Sunday as your pastor, and it's this What are you serving up this Thanksgiving? What are you serving up? I don't want to serve up a root of bitterness. But it's not enough just to say, I don't want to be, I don't want to be that. That's not enough. You actually have to have a vision of what you want to become. It's not enough to say, I just, I don't want to be like mom or dad. That's not enough. You actually have to have a vision of what God wants to do in your life. So Lord, I want to be overflowing with gratitude, God. 
I want to have your praise on my lips every single day, like the psalmist said. Lord, I want to be thankful for the blessings in my life. I want to be thankful for the people in my life. Lord, I don't want to defile others, Lord God. I want to feed others, Lord Jesus. I want to encourage others, Lord God. I want to be a life-giving vessel, Lord God, of your kingdom, Lord Jesus. I want to be someone who who lifts countenances, Lord God, who elevates faith, Lord God, who encourages, Lord, who affirms, Lord God, who who disagrees with with the, the negative word curses spoken over people's life, that cancels those things out, Lord God, that changes their mind, Lord God, into hopeful processes, God, into expectation, Jesus. Oh, does anybody want to be like that this morning? Come on, if you want to be like that this morning, can you stand to your feet? Come on, let's stand to our feet right now. Let's stand to our feet. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to close here. Just give me, just give me about three minutes here, and we're going to bring this to a close. Just close your eyes. I sense his presence that's here. The Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. He inhabits a heart of thankfulness to him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 So I throw up my hands. Come on, let's just sing this right now. So I throw up my hands, praise you again and again. Come on, let's lift that up. This morning, and the Lord is wanting to wash over you. The Lord is wanting to cleanse you. The Lord is wanting to heal you. The Lord wants to uproot hurt, disappointment, pain, confusion, resentment. He wants to uproot it today, and He wants to replace it with His love. He wants to replace it with His power. He wants to replace it with a new vision. He wants to replace it with overflowing thankfulness. Come on, if you need that this morning, can you just give him a wave? Come on, just give him a wave this morning. You need that this morning. Come on, you need a fresh touch from God. Come on, you need Jesus to move something in your heart right now. Just give him a wave right now. I'm going to pray here in a moment. I want the altar team just begin to make their way front. If you got your hand up, I want you to come forward and find one of our altar team members before you leave today. Father, I pray, Lord, for deep washing, Lord God, for deep cleansing this morning, Lord God. You got to cleanse the wound before you can close the wound. Lord God. Father, I pray, Jesus, that by your stripes, Lord God, you would cleanse us, Lord, of unrighteousness. Cleanse us from the defilement of the word, Lord, of the world, Lord God. And bring us, Lord God, back to the supper table, Lord God. Bring us back, Lord God, to commune with you, Jesus, with clean hands and a pure heart, God. Not because of any works, Lord God, but because of the finished work, Lord God, of the cross. Oh, Lord, would you bring healing, God, at these altars? Come on. You need to come forward this morning. Just come and find someone. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Come on. Let's sing that one more time. Let's sing that one more time. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah, Lord. I pray, God, we would shine like lights in a dark world, Lord God. And I pray it would be overflowing, God, overflowing on our lips, overflowing on our, on our faces, overflowing with our actions, God, overflowing, Lord God, on social media, God. I pray, Lord, we'd be filled, Lord God, with a holy gratitude, Lord Jesus. Continue to move at these altars, God, as we worship and seek you and bless your people this morning, I pray in Jesus' mighty name. We're going to continue to worship. These altars are going to be open. But if you need to go at this time, we love you, church. Bless a couple people around you before you leave. Have a happy and safe Thanksgiving. And if you want to grab a box before you go, bring it back tomorrow from 8 to 9. We'll make sure it gets to a family in need. God bless you, church. God bless you. Hey, thanks again for checking out ICLV here on YouTube. Hope you're already subscribed, getting notifications. Make sure you're following us on all our social media channels. Download our mobile app and check us out Sundays, 9 a.m., 11 a.m., online, in person. We want to see you there. God bless.